All right, we're going to get started in this video programming the print intro one in your packet. If you didn't download the full packet of the handouts that we give in class, uh, there should be a link with this video to download the print itself. And again, it's going to be intro one. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to click on the program manager icon here in the far left of our icon bar. And we're going to create a new program, new conversational. That's going to create a new no-name program with whatever number's next, in this case, two. We're then going to go set up our tool. I'm going to call up tool 100. And if you look in the top corner of these prints, it'll tell you what um, tool list we want to use for each one of, the, of these particular programs. So I'm going to create an end mill. So I'll click on end mill. It's a 5 eighths, so 0.625. I could also have put in 5 divided by 8. Anywhere in this control you can put a number, you can do it as a numerical value. Now the tool cal length is something that will be set at the machine. That's just the calibrated length of the tool. We do not need that for graphics. Nor do we need to set up speeds and feeds for these tools. Um, there is a video that I cover on how to create tools earlier in this series, and we talk about speeds and feeds there. So if you need to know more information about that, uh, please go visit that video. But for purposes of this video, I'm just going to put 800 surface feet, five thousandths per tooth, and I'm going to make it a three flute end mill. So that'll create an RPM and a feed rate for us based on the diameter of the tool. So now I have my program created. I have a tool list. I'm going to go ahead and go to part setup, more stock geometry. I'm going to set up some stock for this. So I want to make it a box. I want to manually size it. And this material size is 3.5. In X, Y is 2.5. And it is one inch thick. The front left corner is zero, so I don't need to put anything in for the reference positions. So now I'm ready to just start programming. Now, there's a couple ways we can get to into our program. I can click on the input file folder icon here. And from there, go directly into part programming. I could also go to review, highlight the location in the program where I want to insert a block, and hit the insert block before. So there's a couple different ways that I can get there. <clears throat> I typically teach everyone to go from the input screen in the beginning, because that way you're always in a habit of going to that input screen anytime you're lost or you're looking for a, a field or a, a page. So it's just it's one step that is kind of becomes a uh, habit to you and you're able to find pretty much whatever you need there. So I'm going to go to the input screen. I'm going to click on part programming. Now that brings up the selection of blocks I'm going to put in the program. Now this is just a mill circle. It's a pocket, two inches in diameter, and a half inch deep. So I'm going to select milling. I'm going to select circle. And now I have one page of information that I need to enter or fill out to describe what this circle looks like, what tool I'm going to use, and how fast it's going to cut, how deep, and things like that. So it wants to know the center. We're looking at our print. The X center is 1.75. The Y center is 1.25. The radius is 1 inch, 2 divided by 1. Now the Z start, the Z start is a positive number. It's the rapid to position that we want our tool to rapid to above the part before we cut it. So I'm going to put in a positive 0.1. It could be anything positive. Uh, we don't typically want to start with zero because we don't want to run into the top of the part. We want to stop somewhere right above it so we can begin to feed down to it. So our Z bottom is our final depth. In this case, it's going to be 0.5. minus 0.5. The start angle. So on a circle, we automatically begin to blend on and off of that circle at the 3 o'clock position. That is zero degrees on our, on our programming compass. If we couldn't program or we couldn't blend on and off there because of a feature on the part, maybe a clamp or something like that, then we can pick anywhere along that circle 
from 0 to 360 degrees, and that's where it would blend. In this case, starting at 3 o'clock is not an issue, so we're going to leave it at 3 o'clock or 0. So now we're going to go down to our tool. We can type in the number if we know it. We can also hit this little button for select tool from list. Once we get there, we can click on these, the, the column headers to sort in that particular column. It starts out as tool number. It's going to sort based on tool one all the way to tool whatever you have, 9,999 available. I typically will click on the tool which that way it groups everything by type. And I'll scroll down until I find end mill and I want tool 100. So I'm looking for a half, uh, 5 eighths end mill and I know that it was tool 100. So now I can either highlight it and hit select tool or I can double click it. Either way it will put that in as the selected tool for the program. Now under milling type I have on, which is no cutter compensation whatsoever. The center of that tool would follow the circle that we've described. Inside or outside, it will stay to the inside or the outside of that circle, but it will automatically blend on and blend off based on some parameters that we can talk about later, the distance that starts away from it. Profile inside and profile outside, which would allow me to start very far away from the, the finished circle and then step over by a percentage of the tool each time, removing a bunch of material um, on the outside of a part, for example. Or we can make it a pocket boundary or a pocket island. We're going to make this a pocket boundary. This removes all the material on the inside of that circle all the way out to the two inch diameter and a half inch deep. You can see as I hit the enter button, I have a feed rate and an RPM because I put that information in with my tool. If I wanted to change that or I had not entered it with the tool, I could put it in at this time. The step over percent of the tool is going to step over 50% of the tool each, each pass of the circle as it starts in the center and moves out. Peck depth. I probably don't want to do that half inch all in one depth. So I could put in something like a hundred thousandths and it would peck one hundred thousandths at a time and finish this circle. I don't need a negative value because I'm starting at a positive point one. I'm going to a negative point five so it knows the distance or I'm sorry the direction to step down that point one. And then my plunge feed maybe we want to go ten inches a minute into the part. Now we have some more tabs here. The finishing tab if I wanted to put another tool in there I'll just Let's say we'll rough and finish with the same tool. If I don't use a finishing tool, the roughing tool will take it to final size, so I don't have to use a finishing tool. Surface finish quality, that is something we will talk about in a later video, but basically defaults to 80 for roughing and 20 for finishing, and that is a really good uh, starting point. Basically, the lower the number, the more accurate, slower, and obedient the toolpath is. The higher the number, the more uh, throughput you get, the faster that tool will run, but it can round corners and things just a little bit, so it's not quite as obedient as of a tool path as it would be with a lower number. But 80-20 for rough and finish seems to work out really well. <clears throat> and the last one is allowances. If I am going to use a finishing tool, maybe I want to leave 10 thousandths per side and 5 thousandths on the floor for our finishing. If I were to use a roughing tool with finish allowance and no finishing tool, the roughing tool would not remove that allowance. So I could use this for grind stock. I could use this for stress relieving a part, things like that. So now we've filled out all the information that we need to. If I go hit the draw button here, we're going to have a part with a circle in the middle and our stock is set up to match the geometry of the stock in our print. So that is intro one.